I started to create an alter ego based on Conor McGregor, the MMA fighter, because I'm secretly, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to be an MMA fighter. That's my sort of secret thing. But anyways. Um, yeah. Look out, Simon. <laughs> God, yeah, I can't sorry. face it anymore. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> So what I loved about Conor McGregor, you know, whether mm-hmm. you like him or don't like him, um, the point is, is that he doesn't care what anyone thinks. And again, this might be his alter ego, mm-hmm. right? But he has this unbridled confidence, the way he holds his shoulders, the way he walks into a room, the way he faces people. And there was a certain sort of, um, there were certain aspects of his his personality and his stance and his behaviours that I thought maybe I should start to mirror that and see if I can adopt it. Just by being it, I can adopt it, adopt that mindset. Uh, And so, yeah, I kind of created this whole character um, called Paddy McGinty. Um, You know, sort of a costume for Paddy, a a stance for Paddy, Mm -hmm. a stare, like these certain things that could trigger this air of kind of, I don't give Mm -hmm. an F. Um, And I really practiced it a lot. Um, And then I started to adopt it in training. And then during certain training sessions, if I was having a bad day, you know, I'd have all of these triggers that could bring about Paddy. Um, And and that, you know, uh, I was able to sort of then put that into my race performance. It's not just dress up make believe. There's now some really compelling neuroscience evidence about why imagining yourself or thinking about yourself as a third person it really helps your brain biochemistry for stress, for pain tolerance, for confidence. And many athletes, um, the trouble is that they see there the thing that's stopping, that they see it in the way, whether it's temperament or personality-wise, getting in their way of their greatness or excellence is this huge bait, this thing at the base of a mountain. Oh, I don't know how I can ever do it. And well, what about if you just faked it, right? So, so faking till you're making it is an evidence-based statement now. There's lots of great evidence to say so. And it's really upended how psychology is done because we always thought that if we have to start with how you think and we change that, that will affect how you feel and then you'll start to act more, blah, blah, blah. And now you can reverse engineer it. So even if you're rotting inside and scared shitless and nervous and then feel impostering, uh, you can put on these behaviours, uh, exert these behaviours, and you can change shift that mindset fairly quickly. So it's really interesting. The, the, the psychological term is embodied cognition, but it's a, a really compelling sort of psychological... And you, we know in therapy, right, you talk to the puppet or imagine if you were standing here, what would you say to your brother, eight-year-old self? Or, so there's been a long history of that in sport. So, yeah, it's a really powerful technique. When did Paddy McKinty last came up, come out? Oof, probably Sunday. Last night in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is a PG show. <laughs> Kidding. 